going on guys? My name is Tyler Richley and I'm going to be telling you all about this This is the Sony a6500, and this is the first camera that I ever bought. This camera means a ton to me. It was a great beginner budget option for me when I bought it four years ago. And I still think in 2024, it's a great budget option. I can't wait to share why. Inside this camera it has a 24.2 megapixel sensor, which basically is gonna be able to pump out really high quality looking photos compared to the Sony a7S III that I'm shooting on right now, which has a 12 megapixel sensor. This is gonna allow you just a little bit more leeway to punch in, kind of reframe your shots, but it's not gonna be anything crazy, but it still takes really high quality shots for the price. All of the shots that you're seeing right now were exclusively taken on the a6500, and as you can see, it takes amazing looking photos. Now that 24 megapixel sensor also does really nice looking video. This camera is a great hybrid option, especially if you're looking for a camera on a budget. The video quality goes 4K up to 30 frames per second. And then if you want slower motion, 60, 120, you have to shoot that at 1080p with a crop factor, I believe. Then if you're looking to do slow motion, 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second can all be done at 1080p, which may not look super glamorous when you're filming on a Sony a7S III that does 4K, 120, 10 bit, but this camera really does create some really beautiful looking slow motion. And I used it all the time on my social videos. I probably wouldn't use the slow motion on a professional shoot just because you can definitely tell the difference between the 1080p and the 4K footage. But for social media and general use cases where you just want to slow something down, like I used this exclusively to film baseball. If you guys are an OG of the channel, you know I used to film my entire day, entire life as a Division One athlete, and I used this camera solely mixed with a GoPro to capture all of that. It, it really does create some really high quality images. Now, one of the things that I really dislike about this camera is gonna be the actual screen situation here. It has this pivot screen but it doesn't have the actual flip out screen like I have on the a7S III right here, which is probably one of the main negatives of the a6500 itself is actually just gonna be the screen. As you can see, it just has this little pivot screen. It's not the best build quality. And then the viewfinder. The viewfinder itself for me is in a really weird position. I prefer the more middle one. The quality on it's just not the best. That's one of the main things that I notice about the build quality on this versus the a7S III is the a7S III just feels a little bit more thought out. Obviously it's a little bit bigger of a case that they can move stuff around in, but I'm not a fan. One of the things that makes the Sony A6000 line cameras so cheap is that under the lens, it actually has a APS-C sensor. So if you guys don't know what APS-C means, it basically means that there's going to be a crop factor on the sensor. Whereas on this camera, I'm shooting full frame. So that crop basically punches in on every lens. So right here, I have a 50 millimeter lens, which in actuality, through the sensor with the crop factor, probably is playing a little bit more like an 80 millimeter lens. So you can use it strategically to get a little bit tighter, but it is one of the main drawbacks of these APS-C cameras. It's harder to get a wide angle. So like right now I'm shooting on 16 to 35, 16 really wide on a full frame, but 16 on a APS-C sensor is probably like 25, 24 mil, which is wide, but it's not ultra wide. It's not good for vlogging. Like I wouldn't recommend that as being your widest angle if you're looking to film yourself. You probably need to look into more like a a 10 millimeter prime or a 12 millimeter prime from either Sony or Samyang. I have the Samyang 12 millimeter F2 and it's an okay lens. It, it's definitely wide enough and it's super cheap, which is one of the things about this camera that actually makes it still such a good option in 2024 is the ability to use cheap lenses, cheap glass, and get a great looking image. Right now I have the 50 millimeter F1.8 on this which is a beloved lens by the community, the Nifty 50. It really does create beautiful looking images. Great for portraits, great for B-roll, 
great for any type of low light shooting with that super fast aperture. And I think this lens was $150 used, 300 new. Where are you finding prices like that for a full frame glass? Like it's just never gonna happen. So that's what makes this combination so amazing is you're gonna be able to create beautiful looking images on a budget. This combination right here at the time of recording costs this much, which I think is pretty insane when it comes down to the image quality and the actual specs that you're gonna be able to perform with this body. And it's it's definitely a great budget option if you're looking to become a beginner or looking for a B or maybe even a C cam. This is what we run on our overhead rig. We also run this as a basically just stationary BTS cam. It really does the job for all of that. I have really enjoyed using this camera and I think you will too. So if you guys wanna pick up this camera or this lens, we'll have all the links down in the description along with the entire studio things that we use, computer, tripods, camera, light, whatever it is, anything that you guys wanna buy, we'll have it linked down in the description and that's a great way to help support the channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.